I did something that I have never done before. I booked a last minute cruise on a cruise line that I have not sailed with in over a decade. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, after I booked this cruise, I did wonder, did I do the right thing? I will tell you all about the cruise that I booked. And I thought at the same time, I would do one of my cruise channel updates and Q and A's. I absolutely love answering a lot of your questions from the travel questions and the cruise questions to the questions that are a little bit more personal. Now in this video, I am gonna be sharing with you my upcoming cruise. And by the way, I am going to need your help. I am going to need some tips as well as some things that you are going to want to see. And I am gonna be answering some of the questions that many people have had, including what was my best excursion? Does my husband have a job and do we pay for cruises? And what, if anything, ever irritates me on a cruise? Now, as always, before we get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Our upcoming cruise. Now, I did think about holding this off for after the questions, but I just can't stand the suspense. So the cruise that we are doing is on the Carnival Venezia. Now, we chose a Carnival cruise partly because, honestly, a lot of people in the YouTube audience, in the community, had been asking me some different questions about Carnival. It has been over a decade since I've cruised with Carnival, and I know that Carnival really does have the fun ships, and I did think it is time for me to experience Carnival again for myself. Now, secondly, if you know me, you know that I also do like to drive to cruise ports when possible, and the Carnival of Venezia is sailing out of New York, which is an easy enough six hour or so drive. And finally, this is the part where I'm not sure perhaps if I did make a little bit of a mistake, but this cruise is four days. So it leaves from New York and it does one day in Bermuda and a couple of sea days. Now, I do think that I could have booked something a little bit longer, but being honest, the cruise and dates just fit well into my schedule. Now, a question people often ask is, is it better to book last minute or is it better to book in advance? I can say from this cruise, it would have been much better for me to book this in advance. I did this pretty last minute and I do think I probably paid on the upper end of what this cruise would sell for. Now, of course, this makes sense. I'm going on a carnival cruise during summer vacation, so that really is high season. But I do suggest that if you are looking for a summer break, for spring break, for holidays especially, and if you can't drive to your cruise port, that you do book several months to a year in advance. Now, I have to say I've been doing a little bit of research on the Carnival Venezia, and I'm pretty excited. The ship does look pretty good, but it has been a long time since I've been on Carnival, so please leave me your tips, the things that you think that I should do. See, I do have guys burgers on my list and eating the chocolate lava cake. That is definitely something that I'm going to do. But if there's anything else that you think that I should do on my carnival cruise, please do let me know. And if you're considering a carnival cruise or if you just have questions, please let me know down in the comments below as well. Now I have to say I am pretty excited about that cruise. And if you do see me on board, please do say hello. Okay, let's get to our questions. By the way, it is raining outside my window now, so if you hear a little bit of that rain sound, I do apologize. So the first question is, how do I choose my cruise and itinerary? So being honest, it really does depend. A lot of times these days, because I do content creation for a living, I am looking at the actual cruise ships and the itineraries as well to see what do I think might be interesting? What do I think is maybe a little bit popular? And I do tend to book newer cruise ships these days in good part because they are more sought after. Now, when it comes to cruise itineraries, I still do try to choose destinations that I really want to travel to and to visit because after all, I started cruising because I love to travel. And I just happen to think that getting there by cruise ship is probably the best, easiest, and most convenient way for most of us to be able to enjoy our vacation. Now, there is something that I do that I don't think everybody notices, but I do tend to look at the itineraries and to see how long are we going to be in a cruise port and do the hours really suit me? So I do try to avoid itineraries where, for instance, if we are arriving in San Juan at 4 p.m. and we stay there till midnight, for me, those are not convenient hours for me to sightsee or to visit. So to me, that feels a little bit like a waste of a day. So I do take a look and see if I can have those prime hours between perhaps nine and four or nine and six. That is an ideal 
itinerary and day in port for me. Do I get one of the all-inclusive packages when I go on a cruise and is it worth it? So firstly, I usually do. Now the all-inclusive packages, just to let you know, is on some of the cruise lines, you have a beverage package including alcohol, you have Wi-Fi and gratuities, or sometimes it may be shore excursions, but you have all of that that's included in the price of a cruise, but there would be an add-on amount. Now, do I usually get this? Yes. Do I think it's a value for everyone? No. So here are my genuine thoughts. If you're trying to cruise on a budget, I probably would do the calculations and maybe I wouldn't get the all-inclusive package. The reason is because of the alcohol portion, I do find that the price of many of the different all-inclusive packages have increased in the last couple of years. So I definitely think that you need to calculate this for yourself and every cruise line is a little bit different. However, for me, if I'm going to break even approximately on the drinks and the Wi-Fi and the gratuities, well, oftentimes I do like having the package because it does give me freedom to try different drinks and to not have to think about budgeting that or paying for any extra expenses at the end of the cruise. Have I ever had any rude table mates on a cruise? And what would I do if I did meet up with any rude passengers? Well, firstly, I have had a lot of really good experiences in the past with shared tables. However, there have been two occasions where I did actually speak to the maitre d' at the end of dinner and I asked if we could change tables for the next day. I don't think you should ever be shy about that. They can put you on the other side of the dining room and you will never see them again. So I definitely think that that is something that you should do. But otherwise, if I am stuck at a table with somebody that's rude, probably what I would do is just smile uh, try to steer the conversation another way. I might even say something like, oh gosh, I just don't know anything about that and hope that the conversation will go another way. Worst comes to worst, I probably would eat quietly and just say, oh my goodness, we have to get to a show. Okay, so now I have some content creator questions. These are pretty fun. So firstly, do I get recognized more on cruise ships these days? Yes, that definitely does happen. I actually get a little bit of a kick out of it. The other question was, if people see me, can they say hello? Does it bother me if people say hello? Would I stop and chat? So no, it doesn't bother me if people say hello. I actually very much appreciate it. I do this and I'm so happy and grateful that people are watching these videos that it really is a little bit of a thrill for me. If you do say, hi, I watch your videos, I will be very happy to meet you. Now, of course, if I'm in the middle of something or we're rushing over to something like a show, then I may have to keep the conversation brief, but I'm always happy to say hello and even take a picture. Does the work aspect take away from the joy of cruising? Now being honest, this is something that we actually struggle with a little bit because we absolutely love cruising, but it is now our jobs to do this. So we do have to really be conscientious about balancing our time. So usually what we do is we know what we have to do. We know certain filming that we have to do. We know certain photos that we have to take. So we really do try to organize our time between doing that and also having some downtime to enjoy. Now, a question that comes up every so often is, what does your husband do for a living that he's able to cruise so often? And do you guys have other jobs? Because how do you afford to cruise so often? So we are content creators. This is actually what we do. Now, I don't think I mentioned this at the time because it did happen a little bit suddenly, but my husband did leave his full-time job at the beginning of the year and it ended up being such a blessing. It was something that he was considering doing but it has worked out really well. It's given us the flexibility and the time to not only cruise more often, but also to work more on different aspects of the business. So to answer the question, do we have other jobs and how do we afford to cruise so often? Well, basically this is our business. This is what we do. And when we do pay for cruises, hotels, flights, excursions, any of that, those are all business expenses. And we do of course have to make sure that we're making enough money in the business to be able to reinvest in some of the travel and other expenses. Now, as I've mentioned in past videos, we do pay for most of our cruises and most of our travel expenses. But over the last few months or year or so, we do have brands that have started to reach out to us. And I'm definitely grateful because it does give us more opportunities that we can share with you. Now, by the way, if we're working with a brand or we've been invited by a brand, then I will always be letting you know in the content. Would I ever consider collaborating with other cruise YouTubers and sharing each other's cruise experiences? 
I absolutely would. I would love to do that. I have in the past, and I think a lot of cruise YouTubers do try, but when there are lives, for instance, on Emma Cruises, she has lives where she sometimes has other cruise YouTubers, creators that are on. So I've been on Emma's lives before and she has been on mine. I've also been on Sherry from Cruise Tips TV on her podcast and she's been on uh, my live in the past on my channel. And I would definitely do that with other people. And honestly, if you have other ideas of what you would like to see in terms of collaboration between different people, different cruise YouTubers, please do let me know. I'm absolutely open to that. I love the idea. When it comes to cruising and cruising often, does embarkation day ever get old or lose its excitement? Now I can tell you 100%, it never gets old. I am always so excited and I anticipate embarkation day. It is still the best. What is my dream cruise? Who have I not cruised with yet that I want to? And is there a cruise line I would never cruise with? So firstly, who have I not cruised with yet that I want to, it's actually MSC. And a big part of that is because I know that MSC is really growing in North America. I know a lot of people are wondering about them. So that is a cruise line that I am hoping to get on, hopefully within the next few months or otherwise next year. Now, when it comes to a dream cruise, part of it is itinerary and part of it is cruise line and experience. So when it comes to the itinerary, I think I would love to just go to Hawaii and Tahiti. That would definitely be really appealing to me. And the other area is also Greek Isles, Mediterranean, uh, Montenegro, Croatia. I've already been on a Mediterranean cruise, but I absolutely love it. And I would really like to explore that area more. Now, when it comes to cruise experiences, I've had a lot of amazing cruises on a lot of great cruise lines, but I have not had a luxury cruise yet. I would like to experience that because I do think there are some differences. And I am really kind of curious about that. And I do think that there is something really nice about the idea, not only of going to somewhere, having a destination that you're going to, but really that the journey is maybe so pampering and so rejuvenating that that in itself becomes well worth the price. Oh, and have I done a river cruise? No, not yet, but it's on my list. What are the best excursions that I have ever done? Now, one of them was in St. Lucia. We did a tour around St. Lucia and it included going to the mud bass and then after that rinsing off in the waterfalls i can tell you that as much as the mud maybe when you're looking at it it looks a little bit gross it, it was so good the feeling of that mud my skin felt so good afterwards i definitely do recommend that and saint lucia is absolutely beautiful now something else that i really loved was snorkeling in goth k in belize that was drift snorkeling it was so perfect we saw gorgeous colorful fish definitely a good memory and another excursion that might be a little bit surprising was duns river falls we did it when our kids were young my husband and i did that when we were on a recent cruise just the two of us we absolutely loved it and ephesus if you are going in a mediterranean cruise and you are in kusadasi if you have a chance to go and visit ephesus you will not regret it that was almost a life-changing day it was just incredible and if you see that you can get the tour with the terrace houses, I definitely recommend it. What gets me irritated when I'm on a cruise? I thought this was a really fun question because I'm generally very go with the flow. Not a lot really flusters me, but there are a couple of things. Pretty much they're small things, but one thing is if the Wi-Fi is bad, maybe because I do work and I need Wi-Fi when I'm on a cruise, but if I'm paying for premium Wi-Fi and it's very slow and doesn't work well, it does irritate me. That being said, it's really honestly gotten so much better. Our last couple of cruises, the Wi-Fi has been great. Now, other things that irritate me are really so small, and I know they're very, very petty, but I do tend to notice them. So one of them is three-in-one body wash, shampoo, and conditioner. I just think there's no place for that. So I don't like that if I see that on a cruise. Now, the other thing is when the cruise ship cafe runs out of the covers for the to-go coffee cups. I guess because the coffee is so hot and I used to work in preschool and I'm always thinking, oh goodness, if I walked with that coffee and it spilled on somebody, that would be dangerous. So I just feel like they should really have enough of those covers for the coffee cup. And I feel like I'm telling all of my petty little secrets, but this is something at a restaurant. So whether I'm on a cruise ship or whether I'm at home, but it just kind of irks me when I get dessert and I don't have my coffee first. I love coffee so much and I really like my coffee 
before or with my dessert. Anyway, I know these are very, very small things, but those are the little things that irritate me on a cruise. Now, please, if you have any little things that irritate you on a cruise, even though you love cruising, please do let me know in the comments below. Now, another question I had is how do I keep ideas flowing? How do I keep organized and keep creating content? So a lot of that is really from the comments that you leave. It is so helpful for me to know what is the content that you might want to see in a future video. So please do leave me your ideas of any future videos and as well because I am going to be going on the Carnival Venezia, my first Carnival cruise in over a decade. Please let me know your questions as well so I can share what you want to see. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I always like to keep you in the loop with everything that is going on and I so appreciate you watching. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.